Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comp video. We're going to be talking about DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Now, as you're probably aware, Vulkan is the alternative low-level API to DirectX 12. It essentially, that being Vulkan, took over Mantle using much of the original code base, which uh, Mantle had been created with, and basically stripped away the AMD, or GCN, rather, um exclusive features and made it to be functional across a multitude of different GPUs. For example, you can use it with uh, various GeForce cards, Intel, uh, IGPs, and so on and so forth. Therefore, in a sense, both uh, standards are competing against one another in the marketplace. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to simplify some of the tweets because it could start getting into rather complex and in-depth stuff, which is probably outside of the remit of an opinions video, uh, slash news video, but, but a chap by the name of Axel Geating, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's G-N-E-I-T-I-N-G, who serves as an engine programmer at its software, has recently taken to Twitter and giving his opinions on the whole DirectX 12 thing. He been, begins his uh, tweet by saying, I'm really getting annoyed by everyone, everyone adopting DirectX 12 instead of Vulkan, even for PC exclusives. It literally makes no sense. He then continues by saying availability is now not an issue anymore. You will need two code paths on the PC for Windows 7 compatibility, making the Xbox stuff invalid. And possibly one of the more interesting parts of the uh, selection of tweets was he said, and I quote, Xbox needs special paths anyway. Xbox DirectX 12 is not Windows DirectX 12, at least not if you want full performance, end quote. I'm actually still doing research, and obviously this is not a quote, I'm still doing research in my own time regarding DirectX 12 on the Xbox One versus PC, because, well, there's less data regarding DirectX 12 usage on the Xbox One. In fact, developers have been kind of quiet on it, despite the fact that we've already had a few DirectX 12 ti uh, yeah, titles. For example, Star Wars Battlefront was uh, DirectX 12, and we've had a few others since, including, of course, the upcoming Gears of War. But there are certainly some developers who are already pushing Vulkan. For example, we know that, well, Doom's going to become... Uh, or rather, adopt Vulkan functionality on the PC. And it's looking pretty good from the early clips and demos that we've seen. Don't forget, of course, that demo, uh, demos of Doom were shown off for not just the GTX 1080 debut, but we've also seen them for the RX 480. From my own personal standpoint, I'm not against DirectX 12, so I don't want you to feel that I am. Um, I actually am quite glad that DirectX 12 has come into the fray because ultimately it's a good thing for us to have those options as a gamer and for developers to have those options as well the ones creating the game and certainly there are certain scenarios where I can definitely see you wanting to become tied into Microsoft's infrastructure and therefore DirectX 12 possibly makes a lot more sense especially if once again you don't need the full performance of a specific code path anyway and really tweaking and optimizing the game if you just want DirectX 12. But with all of that said, Vulkan works across a myriad of different devices, and there are certainly still tweaks you need to do. For example, if you want a smartphone version of Vulkan versus a really high-end PC. Ultimately, it comes down to the developers and the infrastructure. From a personal standpoint, Vulkan actually makes more sense from the PC standpoint, because... It works across not just Windows, it also works across Linux. It works across, well, basically any operating system, theoretically, as long as it chooses to adopt um, the standards and obviously it's got the correct hooks, APIs, and all the regular crap that goes along with actually making something work and talk to the graphics card and the OS, which is essentially, remember, what these APIs do. The And vastly simplifying once again, all the API does, DirectX 12, Vulkan, whatever, it basically communicates between the game and the graphics card driver, so the driver can tell the game, I'm um, sorry, the, the GPU, what to do. So, for example, if the game says, hey, I need you to draw a box, the game will tell 
the API, the API will tell the driver, and the driver will well control the GPU or the piece of hardware, and it will draw and it will draw the box. And one of the benefits we've got now is because DirectX 12, Vulkan, and so on are much more multi-threaded, the lower level APIs. It means that you can start squeezing more performance out of the GPU. It means that you also use less energy for the CPU, which is not really something that we care about, for example, with a high-end desktop or even a console, which is obviously plugged into the, you know, your AC power supply. But for mobile devices, it's kind of handy. From the perspective of Microsoft, it makes an awful lot of sense that they're very much keen on keeping DirectX on top because it's one of the issues that Valve have had and this could be an entire different video with an entire different bloody subject line but one of the problems that Valve have had with SteamOS and it's one of the reasons they're so supportive of Vulkan it's like developers need to create games for your well operating system that simple and SteamOS they've They've done their best to improve the libraries, and ultimately SteamOS, by the way, is just a derivative of Linux. But imagine if Microsoft didn't have that control on their ecosystem. If you were able to, that's for the sake of being really silly about this, stick with Windows XP and still use Vulkan, or you wanted to you know, use Windows 7, you never wanted to upgrade, or you decided, ah, fuck this, I don't actually want to use Microsoft for whatever reason. Maybe you're just tired of it. Maybe you just want to change. Maybe you want to use the second partition. Maybe a couple of applications you use, although I don't think this is the case, but let's just say it was, that a couple of applications you use are just purely on Linux. Maybe you decide, eh, I just prefer the, the ecosystem of Linux. Maybe, maybe you're just one of those people that doesn't like Windows. I mean, there are folks around like that and more power to you if that's how you want to roll. But if that's the case, then, you know, theoretically speaking, if developers were to really start pushing Vulkan and we started to get that direction movement, uh, sorry, direction of movement in the industry, theoretically, Microsoft would lose a lot of control over the PC, which would be, I wouldn't go as far as to say catastrophic for them as a company, but it would mean things are really weird for them as a company because obviously one of the primary benefits they're pushing right now windows is the fact that it's so quick it's so tied in with the xbox so yeah this is just my opinions on this um and a lot of the points i've made have been vastly skimmed over in regards to the technical side of things because ultimately I could probably talk about 20 minutes just on some of the technical aspects alone without really going super in depth. But yeah, I just. It's just kind of weird. Um, personally speaking, I think that Vulcan would be better, especially for PC exclusives. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. Speaking of Vulcan, we are going to be having an interview with the folks over at Kronos. It's been a little delayed, to say the least, because of holidays and that type of stuff. Plus, as well, um, they work at different companies as well. So, it's not like that's all they do is work at uh, Kronos. So, we're going to be having an interview with those. And my questions are being answered as we speak. So, if he's interested in some of that stuff, you should definitely stick around. Anyway, um... I'm going to bugger off because I've got some other stuff to do, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.